Yo, what's up guys? It's the Casual Cube here. And I had an epic fail again. Went 0-4 uh, last night for uh, FNM. And the reason being is because I am playing a wonderfully jank deck. Um, you'll see here in a second. But I also got four aggro matchups. All four. And my deck is a combo deck. Um, that, oh, yeah. So, I, I don't really want to go over the record um, or my results, like my matches, in this video. This video is, well, I was making a presentation um, last night for this deck, and by the time I got home from FNM, I was like, the upload is completed. And I just pressed the X button. I was like, cancel the upload. <laughs> I'm not going to show that video <laughs> because this deck definitely has some serious flaws. So, um, as you can see here, it's a deck built around Firebind's Research, which is what I like to call Poor Man's Storm. You know, there's the Thousand Year Storm, then there's Poor Man's Storm, which uh, this card is, I think it sees a little bit of play in the sideboard for like the Is It Drake Phoenix decks where, you know, you're rifling through and then you sideboard this in against the control matchup and then you can get, get, build up your charge counters. But uh, to, to main deck this and build a deck completely around it and morph your deck around this card by, like, using a bunch of can trips and, and you know, like, uh, discovery and stuff, which is, this is a great card. It's just, um, you know, when you, when you first uh, are, are starting to build a deck around this, um, you know, you just don't look, I mean, I thought I was prepared with the fiery cannonades, like the four fiery cannonades against the aggro matchup, but let me tell you, man, uh, I got brutalized. Um, it was mono red goblins first round, mono white weenie second, uh, mono red frenzy burn, and then it was uh, Boros Mentor, which his deck was, uh, I don't know how he got in the last round, but he had like this random Karn in his in his deck which is weird but um yeah anyways uh so i definitely gotta fix the deck i i gotta take out these I, maybe i went a little bit too heavy on the cantrips because i was thinking like i'm gonna try and go for the win with uh you know this right here but it's very very optimistic and um yeah it just it was it was uh very very brutal um dev just uploaded a new video by the way uh, so I'm gonna check that out, but yeah, it's uh, Saturday. I'm probably gonna go to Standard Shutdown again tonight. Um, bring a monocolored deck as opposed to I brought um, that Fire Song and Sunspeaker Jank deck, and I definitely gotta fix that deck too. Um, I'm starting to build a Standard Showdown um, Battle Report, which I'll I went in detail of my Fire Song and Sunspeaker deck and all the flaws in that one. But uh, yeah, definitely gotta spend more money on that. This one. You know, I did stay under budget, uh, I think 15 bucks upgraded, uh, plus, I mean, not including the MSRP of the original Planeswalker deck, so, gonna have to fix this deck, though. I'm, there's a lot of things I gotta fix uh, that I'm thinking about. So, the Lava Coils, man, alright, hold on, let me go over my deck real quick. So, like I said, it was based around the Fire so Firemind's Research deck, but also, not only is that, like, the reason why I'm doing all of the filtering and, like, trying to build up my card draws and the card charge counters on this, which, by the way, in, in round one, I did get three Firemind's Research early in the game, and I had six counters, uh, five and five counters on it, but he still killed me, uh, and, yeah, he got lethal, uh, which I'll go over my battle report, but this this is the, kind of, like, the review, the post-mortem of this bad deck, um, yeah, hold on, let me, let me take a sip of my coffee real quick. Alright, yeah. So, my, my thought process was, alright, this is a bad card, I understand, okay? But let's build some fun jank around it. And I, I, I wouldn't be playing these decks, these jank decks, and doing this Planeswalker deck challenge if my main local game store, game store number one, didn't do infinite entry. Which, by what I mean by that is that a lot of game stores, when you pay the $5 or whatever the interest fee is, if you don't get at least two wins you lose your money. You don't get any booster packs or anything like that. My local game store number one, um, even if you go 0-4, like I did, you get two booster packs no matter what. And that is awesome because, or if you don't want the booster packs, you can actually take the booster pack and get $2.50 store credit, so you can get $5 back for store credit. So essentially you can go infinite. You can use that store credit to get another entry. And I like doing that because I can play Ultimate Maximum Jank in my FNM. 
and it's super casual. Uh, well, obviously, the you know there's obviously some competitive people as well, and it's kind of off the highway, so we get a lot of new people every now and then. Um, so the meta is always changing, um, but uh, yeah, I was uh, <laughs> I was building this Fireminds research deck, and the idea is to filter out your early game. Uh, you know, correct your early game with ops. Uh, radical idea, hopefully get your land drops, dispersal, I mean a discovery, which is surveil to then draw a card, which, you know, these are all great cards uh, to add up counters, but, um, yeah, not sometimes you won't always get Firemind's Research in the beginning, and it, even if you do, you have to lose your turn two playing this, and then you have to, like, catch up and stabilize. They're playing their one drops, their two drops, etc. I thought I was going to use, like, the jumpstart kind of like to add up multiple counters on the Firemind's Research, which, you know, it did work. It, like, the Beacon Bolts, you know, I was taking out two things at once and stuff. I mean, you know, I was, as I was trying to stabilize and, like, you know, try and, you know, maintain my life, uh, just so I can try and pull off the combo, which, I, you know, I'll show you the combo here in a second, but right here, as you can see, uh, fire, uh, Fiery Cannonade, you know, when it did, when I did draw this, it did work. I mean, like, I, that's the only reason why I won one game against Mono White Weenie was because of the Fiery Cannonade, I took him by surprise. I think I got like a 5 for 1, including t some tokens. Um, but yeah, as you can see here, uh, Commissioner's Insight, River's Rebuke, gotta take this one out. Um, I think I got to, um, what, uh, Desolator Magic. I was watching some Desolator Magic, and, you know, every now and then I'll see his, like, little uh, post that'll scroll up or whatever, as you're, you know, on your feed or whatever it is. And, um, yeah, he always shows Selective Snares. I'm like, you know, what is that? Why is he playing with Selective Snare? And, I saw like one of his comments and he was like this you know someone else was making fun of him from playing selective snare and he was like this because this card wins games and I was like oh okay I didn't take it seriously but now after playing this card and looking at my options for board wipes I think I might need to have to play selective snare so yeah because this card like even at turn six they just play all if against a mono white weenie deck they just play all their crap again and by then it's just too late turn six is too late even if you get your mana correct uh, your land drops every turn, and then here's the combo, guys. So this is this is why it's the ultimate jank. All right. So in the raw, okay. Not only is it the raw planeswalker deck challenge, okay? Are we playing with the tutor card as well as you know the raw caller of storms, which this uh, this you know minus two actually does work against the mono white uh, weenie decks with the one toughness. It's crazy, but um, yeah. Uh, so this is the combo. So when you get the raw planeswalker deck, you get one. Omni Spell Adept and one Erratic Cyclops, okay? And your brain starts thinking, you're like, what is this? Why do they include these cards? They don't give you the apex of power, unfortunately, but you, you know, I'm only gonna get, I'm only gonna play one of. And I think it was a mistake. I should have, I, you know, in hindsight, after I did the order, I was like, oh, wait, you know, there's that Invert Invent card um, I was reminded of, I think, from a draft or something, and uh, from like a draft video I was watching, and that card essentially in the event part is you pay six, one red, one blue, four colorless, or four any, any mana, and uh, you can tutor out instance, two instants or sorceries, and or sorceries. So you can tutor out this card, so that I need to get that invert and vent, and the invent, uh, invert part is also really good for the erratic cyclops because you can turn these into eight ones. So the combo is you get Omni Spell Adept out, hopefully on turn four you already have the erratic cyclops out. So they're both on the field, and by the way, Omni Spell Adept. Yeah, Omni Spell Adept. Uh, he gets lava coiled pretty much all the time. Like I, I think I had one turn where he was alive, and I didn't have the Apex Power in hand. But most of the time, like you know, every time I casted him, like probably like three times. R next turn, lava coiled. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's just the way it is, but. Uh, I still love playing with this card, and I think I can, I'm still going to try and make this work, uh, because on the kitchen table, this is going to be fantastic. I mean, this is going to be a one heck of a wombo combo, so. Um, yeah, you have the Radic Cyclops out, and then you have the Omni Spell Adept on turn 5. And on turn 6, you can uh, tap this, pay 3, cast Apex of Power from your hand, so you still get the 10 mana of any color from your hand, for three mana, only for three mana, but the CMC is still ten. So your erratic cyclops all of a sudden becomes a ten eight with trample. So this is tapped, you swing in for ten, and hopefully with Apex of Power off the top of your deck, off the top seven cards, you get some burn. In my case, I don't you know, I definitely built this deck wrong. Not only did I not withstand the aggro decks, 
but I think I, ha I went too all in on these cantrips. You know, I was thinking like, oh, I'm gonna build charge counters, all that stuff, which you know, what I like to call this poor man storm deck, uh, which you know, thousand year storm is only trading at like a like almost two dollars right now. I might just make this into a thousand year storm deck, but um, you know, with the radical ideas and you know, uh, discovery dispersal. I mean, these cards, you know, you are drawing cards, but you are also letting them establish the board. And you gotta find a way to clear that stuff and try and get like, you know, three for one or two for one or something with like fire cannonade, but these are my only board wipes, so I definitely gotta include the selective snares. Um maybe some lightning strike yeah, some shocks. Uh there's just so much more that I could have done better um in this deck. This is definitely like a prototype jank build, and again, I wouldn't be doing the stupid stuff, this Plains Market Deck Challenge, if my lo main local game store number one didn't have that infinite entry where you know, even if you go 0-4 like I did, you get the boosters and you can take it into store credit and then turn it into 5 bucks again and, you know, use that as another entry. So you can go infinite. So, and the reason why they do that is because they're a, um, they're also, they also serve food and beer. So they're, ma they make a lot of money just by that. They want people in the doors. They want to show that, you know, their store is always populated so people are always coming in and buying food and, you know, buying beer and, you know, it works. I mean, I was talking with, um, uh, well, I don't want to say names, but I was talking with the manager uh, for the card shop. He, it's only for the card part. I think he does all their orders for the cards. Um, and I played him against Magic League uh, for the Guild's Ravnica meta, which I think started like in October or whatever. But um, I was playing against him, and um, we were just chit chatting. And he was saying that the reason why we go, they do it, they make it really friendly for casuals, where you can get your two booster packs, even if you go zero and four, is because. They make a lot of their money off of food and beer and just having people in the doors. So, um, yeah, that, that's a great business model, right? And also it allows me to play this kitchen table decks at F and M. So, but yeah, I just wanted to go over quickly over my um, kind of like what my improvements could be. So I did have the fiery cannonades, but I, I need to have early game creatures. I went too all in on the spells. Like I, I have a ton of spells because I was thinking I'm gonna try and make this work. I'm gonna force it, and it doesn't work. <laughs> Uh, you know, I'll probably still main deck this because, or maybe just go and get the uh, Thousand Year Storm cards, uh, enchantment, um, which are like two bucks each, so, it, yeah, it might break budget, and then, you know, if I'm going to do that, then I probably will have to go with the Lava Coils. Uh, I think I'm going to stay honest to the challenge, though, and try and stay under budget, so I'm going to have to look at that and see if I can make the budget work. Um, but yeah, the Lava Coils are also like a dollar fifty to two bucks, I think. And the Thousand Year Storm is, like, I think two bucks, so. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to have to get some early game. You know, I don't want to play with the Fire Urchin, which is that 1-3 trample with, you know, every time you cast an instant sorcery, you get plus one um, power, which is kind of similar to the Radix Cyclops. Here, let me correct this uh, color. Oh, well, whatever. Uh, the Radix Cyclops, I did, you know, I would use, like, Ops and Radical Ideas to, you know, get favorable trades, um, you know, you know, they would declare their attackers, they would come in, and then I would cast a hopped, and it would become a 1-8, or a radical idea, and it would become a 2-8, and I would trade in, uh, get a favorable trade there, but if I could potentially do that with the Fire Urchin, they're like, they're attacking in with their 2-2 or whatever, um, and then I could, you know, potentially get a favorable trade with an opt, but I think I might go with the Omen Speaker, this is a combo deck after all, and with Omen Speaker, it's kind of like, you know, we get that 1-3 body, but we also get the 2 scry. So, I might do that. Sailor of Means. Oh my god, I forgot about that card. When someone was telling me about that, I was like, oh my god, how did I forget about Sailor of Means? It's that 1-4 body, 3 mana, and you get that treasure token. Boy, I can use some treasure tokens because, let me tell you, you know, I think I tried to cast Apex of Power. I was like, I didn't have any of the combo pieces. I had this in hand, and I was like, oh man. I, I, you know, there's like no way I'm gonna cast this from hand without my combo pieces. So maybe with the treasure tokens, I can potentially, you know, with the one four body, maybe they have to burn a lava coil on it, and then, you know, then all of a sudden I have a free omni spell of death. I mean, there's just so much I can do here, right? And then Enigma Drakes. I'm just gonna buy the Enigma Drakes. Crackling Drakes. They spiked because everyone's playing the Crackling Drakes. They might drop down the Crackling Drakes because, you know, Jessica Control might be less of a thing. It might be less popular. People might. You know, they'll probably still crack open the booster packs, and then, you know, people are migrating over to the Esper control, or whatever the hot new control deck is. So, maybe Crackling Drakes in the future will be cheaper, but I'm just going to buy the Enigma Drakes. Um, 
And then, oh yeah, some cyborg tech. I need to include the dual shot. Oh, I was looking at. I was. I was trying to think of like some, you know, unique ways to. Uh, you know, I was on Scryfall, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna look at my, uh, the red cards and see if I can find any tech against all these aggro decks. Because four aggro decks. I mean, gosh, four friggin' aggro decks. Because there's like, I think there's like two Jeskai control players. Um, there's that one regular Jeskai control player, and there's like this new Jeskai control player I've never seen before. Um, and th again, this is my local game store number one. So, um, you know, I think they were all sending them down into the, the middle and lower brackets. And I actually played up in round three. Yeah, my opponent was 1-1, one, one, which was unfortunate because I was playing maximum jank. Uh, yeah, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, maybe dual shot because you get the... It's kind of like Fiery Cannonade. It's like Fiery Cannonade Jr. You know, it's like one card, get a two for one, you know. With the Fiery Cannonade, you're trying to get a three for one or a four for one or whatever. And, and let me tell you, man, it felt super good when I got that three f or like a four for one. I think it was five creatures, including to one token, I think. I, I don't know, because you got the Hazard of Marshall, maybe? No, it was a Legion's Landing, I think, yeah. Uh, but that was, yeah, that was that was a great feeling. I was like, oh, man, that felt so good. Uh, but anyways... Um, so yeah, like, oh my god, and the Selective Snares, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a note from Desolator Magic, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna play with the Selective Snares, give that a shot, because against the Mono White decks, or even the Mono Red Goblins, like, the, you know, the Mono White, there's a bunch of soldiers and vampires, and I can choose one and be like, I'm gonna choose soldier, and then just, you know, they lose tempo, so, yeah, there's a lot I can fix with the deck, um, I'm, I think I'm gonna do it with the name of Drake, Sailor Means, Unspeaker, Raptor Hatchling, Duel, yeah, the Raptor Hatchery. I saw this in a sideboard one time, and it was a four of and a sideboard off of MTG Goldfish. And I was like, why is he playing with that card? And now I thought, now that I think about it, I was like, man, that's that's against the aggro decks, isn't it? Because it's, what are you going to do? You're going to shock it? Okay, you burn a spell on it, and then uh, there's a 3 3 on your board, and they got to deal with that. It just throws a loop in the against the aggro matchups. So, a lot of things I got to fix. This is, is this my first combo deck? This might be my first combo deck, so you know I'm gonna I'm gonna save all the matchups and all the little thing for the monthly battle report. But I just want to go over this quick deck um, tech post mortem, yeah, and uh, show you guys that this deck I forced it. I tried to make it work. I you know it was part of the Planeswalker deck challenge as well, so it just it's even more jank. Um, but yeah, it did not work. And also another cool thing about dispersal, which I've never done before, is uh, you can cast it with Omni Spell Adept, which is pretty sweet. Uh, so yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was just, you know, there's a lot I gotta fix with the deck, um, but, you know, on the kitchen table, like, let me tell you, this is gonna be super fun to play against my friends, like, I'm, I'm just gonna, oh my goodness, it's just gonna be so gratifying, um, I, I, I need to include more shocks, though, and lightning strikes for the apex of power, I think I went too all-in on the Firemind's research, so, yeah, I need to fix that. So there's a lot of things I gotta fix. I, again, if I was on MTG Arena, I could, you know, play test this jank and, uh, yeah, figure out all the holes and everything. But, you know, I'm only playing in paper right now. I'll only play 24 lands. Um, and, yeah, let me show you my sideboard real quick. And, um, yeah, the sideboard is, I was strictly going against the control, but... I should have paid more attention against the aggro. As you can see here, this is all against control. Maybe, oh man, I need to include some syncopates. Yeah, I'm going to do some syncopates, I think. Because I was leaving a lot of my mana up. So maybe I can, even if I take out like a 2-drop against the aggro deck. Or like a Jacoblin Chain Wheel or something. Because I was leaving up mana for like radical ideas and stuff. Um, so that might work. Uh, yeah, the fight with fire. Chemistry's Insight. Yeah, against the control. Siege Game Commander. I just thought, you know, maybe against control or... I think I sideboarded this in against a lot of the... Because I had the Jaya Ballard, and I, I took that Jaya Ballard out, put in the Siege Game Commanders against... Um, I think against the uh, pretty much all the aggro matchups. I did that after game two. Um, and then there's the, yeah, another Jaya Ballard for control, another control card, and another control card. So I went too narrow against control because I thought the Fiery Cannonades would have been enough, but it wasn't. It was not. Um, so yeah, here's a little Ramnik Allegiance thing. My head is going to do that. Um, See, so yeah, that's the post-mortem. A lot of things I could fix with the deck. Um, oh, yeah, I did write Syncope in the main. So, yeah, there's there's some things I got to do. Maybe, oh, yeah, Essence Scatter. So, yeah, that was a lot to, uh, yeah, just a crazy 0-4. I didn't feel bad, though, because, uh, 
you know, I was telling people that it was an Apex of Power deck, and, you know, everyone would just laugh, and they're like, you know, oh, is it, you know, once they saw uh, Omni Spell of Death, they'd be like, oh, no, do you have Apex of Power? And it was just, no, I didn't, unfortunately. I think I did have it one time, but it got lava coiled. So, yeah, maybe you gotta get the Sailor Means, uh, or the Enigma Drakes, and then they burn the lava coils, and then I have a free Omni Spell Adept, and then, yeah, there's just so much I gotta fix with the deck, but it's, it's also a challenge to build this deck. I mean, it's just... I went too all in on the Firemind research, so yeah, that's the post mortem. And I'm glad I didn't show the presentation <laughs> that I did last night. Oh my goodness, it would just be yeah. Oh well, whatever. But here's the post mortem. Uh, so in round three, I might just buy the Thousand Year Storm, or I might um, try and make this try and stay true to the challenge and stay under budget. Um, but yeah, that's round two, post-mortem of this deck, gonna try and fix it. Oh, yeah, the last thing I wanted to mention was this was previously a Wizards deck, uh, but the Wizards is gonna be a separate thing now. Um, that deck, I think, needs the untapped lands, uh, the shock lands, because, you know, in the aggro deck, you know, with a bad control deck, you can get away with, you know, playing the tap lands, but in an aggro deck... You know, I was trying to make it work with only basic lands with uh, wizards, but let me tell you, I mean, you get mana screwed sometimes because you're playing with the League Guild Mage and the Weed Dragonauts and the Adelies. Maybe I gotta lighten up on that kind of requirements, and, and you know, that's something I gotta think about. Or maybe include like two Guild Gates just for a little bit of fixing, but yeah. Um, you just lose tempo when you're trying to be that super aggressive, like one, two, three curve out and then burn them down at like turn four and five. You know, combo off the Adelies and the Weed Dragonauts, so. That's its own separate deck now. It's not part of the Planeswalker deck challenge, but you know the Wizard Tribal deck is just my own little. You know, I might make like a like a battle box tribals or something with like you know vampires and you know wizards or something. I don't know. I'll figure that out. But yeah, this combo deck. I'm gonna try and make it work for round three. I'm gonna this. I've already done Vraska and then Raw uh, for December, so I might try and do it one more time in January to complete the challenge, and then. The new Planeswalker decks will come out, so I'll have more jank to play with. So, yeah, that's uh, just a little quick video on Saturday. I'll do the battle report um, here after this video, and then I'll compile all of that like normal. So, so yeah, hope you guys have a great Christmas and um, happy holidays. And I'm gonna watch this dev video real quick, have some more coffee, and then make that battle report. Uh, and yeah, I'll probably head to Standard Showdown at five o'clock tonight. Um, so yeah, have a good one, guys.